Oil prices also in focus after 10 straight sessions of gains. We are now seeing a rise as we've been discussing already on the show. Let's bring in our guest, Dan Eberhardt. He's the CEO of Colorado-based drilling services company Canary, and he joins us now. Fantastic to have Thank you with morning. us. Thank you. Okay, there's so much going on in the oil markets right now. When you hear the Saudis hinting over the weekend that we're going to see more oil price or oil capacity cuts, does that surprise you in light of the pressures that we've well, seen it, in the last it doesn't two weeks? It doesn't surprise me at all. I think that OPEC and Russia are scrambling to find a floor to oil prices right. so they can uh, keep, you know, keep making money and not continue to lose revenue. What happened here? Because the Saudis have been saying for weeks, look, we're going to be in an excess supply situation come the back end of this year. We had Iran and, and what we saw there with the United States saying that they were going to go to zero output from Iran by November initially. Yeah. And then they turn around and say, actually, we're going to give eight countries the opportunity to continue to export from Iran. Was the president being really smart here, really tricky, or was this an accident? Sure. So I, I think that Trump basically tricked the markets because, or tricked OPEC, because what's happened is the U.S. production has surged. And the Trump administration is really, you know, with these waivers, let the air out of the sanction balloon. So the administration is only looking for a cut from like a 1.1 million barrels a day to about 800,000 barrels a day of what Iran can export. And I think right. the market was expecting that to go to zero. So all that, all that combined with surging with the, with the shale shock of U.S. production is really causing quite a consternation with the oil price. Because everyone's going gangbusters. The U.S. has ramped up output. Russia ramped up output. The Saudis ramped up output. And this is a situation we now find ourselves in with more people exporting from Iran than anyone really thought. Do you think they're frustrated with the president here or is it actually within OPEC themselves there's a degree well, of frustration? I think there's, there's, there's two different things going on. First of all, I think the rest of OPEC is furious at Russia right. and furious at Saudi Arabia and blames them for the price decrease. So that's that's why you're seeing Saudi unilaterally take the half a million barrels a day off because the rest, the behind closed doors, the rest of OPEC is extremely frustrated. Right. I also think that the U.S. administration trick, tricked OPEC a little bit with thinking there was going to be a cut to zero in Iranian exports and giving out all these waivers for the eight countries for the middle dis yes. distillates. And that's creating quite a, uh, a, a taper more than a cut to zero. And so the air has been let out of the balloon on the Iran Iranian sanctions a little bit for oil price. And so that leads to lower prices at the pump and a lower oil price. A lot of people out there are saying, look, we've overshot to the downside here. If you look at the supply picture, if you look at the demand picture here, Clearly, there's a lot of growth concerns out there, and we've seen that reflected more broadly. What is fair at this Sure. So I, I, think, I, think, I think we overshot with the four-year highs in October, and we're seeing a pullback from right. that, but I think we've overshot again. And I think that OPEC and Russia, their uh, partner producer, are really, gonna, are really scrambling right now to supply a floor. I think you're going to see OPEC is going to have to cut. They're talking about a million barrels yeah, a day, at yeah. least in 2019. I think it's going to have to be about two million barrels a day wow. to really provide a floor for the market. Well, because what's what's happening, what's really interesting right now is OPEC has got to decide whether they want to cede market share to U.S. shale and, and reduce production or if they want to maintain market share and keep production relatively steady. And they really don't want to do either, but we'll, we'll see what we'll they decide. We'll see what happens. Where do you think oil prices end by year end? Yeah, so I, I think we're going to see a floor. I think oil prices end maybe 5 or 10% higher than they are right now. Yeah, by makes year sense. End.